everyone and good afternoon. So I just wanted to encourage you today about having no fear. And I talked about this last time, but I feel like it's really important for me right now in my life because I graduated class of 2021. So this is especially for people who graduated class of 2021. And I feel like one of the things Jesus has been saying to me lately and trying to get across to me is not to let fear stop me, not to let Satan stop me by scaring me and putting doubts in my mind. There's a Bible verse that says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally without reproach, and he shall have whatever he asks for with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind let not that man think that he will re will receive anything from the Lord he is a double-minded man unstable in all his ways so with no doubting if you ha lack wisdom about what to do with your life ask the Lord and he there with no he'll give you no reproach when you ask him but don't doubt for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And if you doubt, you won't receive anything from him. Because if you doubt, it's like being on a boundary line with your right foot in one person's property and your left foot in another person's property. And the, Jesus is trying to bless you in one of those properties, but he can't because you're in both of them. You have to make a decision and then he can bless you where you are. That's why if you doubt, you won't receive anything from the Lord because you don't make a decision. So... If you feel like you're on the fence about something God told you to do and you've prayed and you've read the Bible and you've searched it out and you've found something that you feel like this is what you're supposed to do, this is what God's telling you, and then you feel peace, you're like, yep, this is it. I've prayed, I've read the Bible, maybe I've even fasted, and this is what I'm supposed to do. And then you go, oh, but what if this happens and then, and then I have to go home or what if this happens and then, and then you stop yourself. I have an opportunity that I am going to do and I felt like this is the right thing but I was doing that thing where I have one right foot in the right property and one left and as if I have two right feet and two left feet I have one foot in the right property and one foot in the left property and I, was, I couldn't make a decision which I was like oh but what if I go and I have to do this then then maybe I shouldn't go and all these what ifs and sh uh, sh what if this should happen, what should I do? You should deal with each thing as it comes to you. Make a decision and then the next step. It's like a staircase. One step, two step, three step, four step. Nothing is gonna be perfect, but there is something that's perfect for you. The thing God calls you to do is perfect for you. But there's always something that's not perfect and Maybe that's something you could bring to that place you're going or to that thing you're doing or to those people you're going to be working with. If they're lacking something, if there's something you don't agree with, maybe Jesus wants you to go because you're going to you're going to um you're going to make what they're doing better and they'll be more su successful and that ministry will be more successful because of you. So don't let fear hold you back. If you're like, if you're like, I'm going to do this. And then you're like, oh, no, I'm not. Because this might happen. Don't do that. Don't let Satan do that to you. That's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You can't receive anything from the Lord like that. You're like waves of the wind driven tossed. And it's really miserable that way, too. So if you know, you've prayed, you've read the Bible, you maybe fasted, you know this is the right thing to do, do it. Go for it. As David Eubanks says, just go. Don't. Wait, you, you have one life, so you might as well go for it. Because what do you have to lose? That's what David Eubanks says, who uh, founded Freedom Rangers. And now he has like thousands of, thousands of um, Freedom Rangers helping people everywhere. Every day, rescuing people. And so just go. And don't let Satan hold you back with fear. Fear is faith in the devil. Um... No, fear is believing what the devil says. That's what I meant to say. Fear is believing what the devil says. Faith is believing what God says. What the devil says is a lie. What God says is true. So don't believe the lies of the devil and be tied down for your whole life. Instead, 
believe the truth of God and be set free like a bird for your life. That's what I recommend. And I have a person in my family who, my sister-in-law actually, who talked to me and discipled me about, uh, like, one, like one morning she discipled me and I made my mind up and I realized that I was still being fearful and I just needed to make a decision and I made it and I'm excited about it and I'm going to do this thing and while I'm there, the little steps along the way that come, I'm not a prisoner, I can leave, I can do whatever and make decisions as they come to you, one step at a time. By faith and patience, they inherited the promises. You have to wait on the Lord and it's... It, it's you you have to be patient sometimes we don't know what God is doing but he's doing a lot and if we just give up because we don't know what's going on we're gonna miss God's whole plan for our life so we have to keep going even when it seems like things aren't working out even when it seems like God isn't there and even e even when you feel like you it, like, it's a terrible situation, and why did God let you have that situation? Well, it always comes back to what did you do? And if you just, because God would never put you in a bad situation that you weren't safe from. Like, he would never put you, he would not, he, God died to heal you from your sicknesses, and he died to take your sins away from you. So he's not going to put sickness on you, and he's not going to, he's not going to make you, put you in a, sinful situation he's going to try to get you away from that that's what satan's for jesus literally died so he wouldn't have to be sick so he wouldn't have to be in bondage to sin why would he die and then give it back to us no he doesn't he doesn't do that he wants he died for your sins to give you his righteousness he died for your sicknesses and your diseases to give you his healing he wants you to live healed and righteous and prosperous and through his grace he which is unmerited and undeserved favor and power he gave us grace because he had mercy on us and gave a son for us so i went a bunch down a bunch of bunny trails but i just want to encourage you to by faith and patience inherit the promises don't give up just go people say don't give up all the time and when you're in the situation when you feel like giving up, it's not as easy not to give up. But I'm telling you, don't give up. There's a Bible verse where Paul, the Apostle Paul talks about running the race set before him for the prize in Christ Jesus. Run with endurance the race set before you. We strive, when I say we, I mean Christians, followers of Jesus, we strive for an imperishable crown. And others strive for a perishable crown. That's what Paul talks about. And what I think he's saying is we Christians strive for an imperishable crown. What is an imperishable crown? A reward in heaven. The reward of seeing the souls we've saved in heaven. And that's a, and, and blessings on earth for doing what Jesus tells us. But the perishable crown is natural things. Things that are going to all burn one day anyways. A nice house, a nice car, a nice clothes, a nice family, a nice job, and a retirement, and die. That's a perishable crown. It goes away. Do you care more about your life on earth or your life in eternity? Do you want to strive after natural, carnal things your whole life and then go to hell? Or do you want to strive after heaven and eternal things for your whole life and lose all for Jesus' sake and yours will be the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, Jesus said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's not honorable to be persecuted if it's not for Jesus. If, if, and that wouldn't be persecution. Like if you're put in jail for doing a bad thing, that's not an honorable thing. But if you're put in jail for Following Jesus, that's honorable. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So if you follow Jesus and keep your eyes on him and do what he says, obey him, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Those who love me, Jesus said, 
keep my commands. If you love Jesus, you'll keep his commands. What does he command? That you love the Lord your God and that you love one another. One another. So if you want to love the Lord, keep his command. What is his command? Love one another. If you love one another, that's how you love God because you're keeping his commands. So if you want to know how to love Jesus more, love each other. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. Jesus said all of that. And I realized and had a revelation more of how lately of how important love is and loving people. And even when you don't feel like it, you have to take loving people from your head. That's great when you love people in your head. Like you're like, I have to, that, that's not right for me to take more food than this other person or, or something. Or, or I should let them be first in line. And thinking about others, thinking about others, that's good. That's good training. But what I feel like Jesus has told me lately to do is to take it from my mind to my heart. To start thinking about why I love people more than myself. And not just... I love people more than myself. I love people more my, than myself and try so hard and strive. That's kind of re depending on your own strength when you're th thinking about it in your head so much and like, I can't do this, I have to do this. But if you take it to your heart and start thinking about those people and start truly loving them from your heart and start truly thinking about them and praying about them and truly caring about him, get caring about them, that's when you're loving Jesus and that's when you're gonna start living a life of love because it's coming from your heart and it's easy and natural and it's not coming from your head where it's hard and striving. So if you're striving and trying so hard to love people in your head, I encourage you to take, encourage you today to take it from your head to your heart. Start loving people in, a, in your heart. And it kind of comes by revelation, but um, if you're just thinking about others, the Bible says, don't only think about the interests of your own, your own interests, but think about the interests of others. And what I love about that verse is it's not like it's saying, don't think about yourself ever. It's saying, do not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of your, of others. So it doesn't mean you can't have a nice house. It doesn't mean you can't have a nice car, or clothes, children, family, uh, job, whatever you do. It doesn't mean you can't have a nice life. It means don't look only to your own life, but to the life of others. And the truth is, if you want to have a nice life, you have to look to the life of others first. When you look to the life of others first, you're looking to Jesus first. Seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and Jesus will give you everything you need. Seek first the kingdom of God, not the other way around, not seek everything you need and then the kingdom of God. No, seek first the kingdom of God above all else, all else, all means all and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. To follow sin is misery. It's true misery. To follow Jesus and righteousness is life. So people want to follow sin. It's pleasureful. It's way easier. It doesn't require hard work. But then what do you get as fruit? You reap what you sow. Misery and no good fruit because you don't work hard for anything. And bad things because... Sin is bad, so you're going to reap bad things. But when you strive for righteousness, the righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. It's hard. You have to get back up. A righteous man has to get back up, and that's hard a lot of the time. But then you inherit eternal life. Then you work hard for something, and you get the fruit of your hands. What is it? Good fruit. You are not lazy. You work hard. You get good fruit. You choose the right thing and Jesus rewards you with honor and wealth. Wisdom is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared with her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. So if you have wisdom, there's another verse that says, the fear of the Lord, um, 
is the beginning of knowledge. So if you fear God and you, be, you obey his commandments, you are wise. And wisdom is more precious than rubies. In other words, wisdom is more precious than all the money you could ever obtain. Don't strive for money. Don't make money your God. That's called mammon, when money's your God. Make God, make Jesus your God, and all these things will be added unto you. It is foolish to serve money. It is wise to serve God. And fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And so wisdom is more precious than rubies, and all the things you can desire are not to be compared with her. Length of days is in her right hand, so you live a long time if you have wisdom, by fearing the Lord, following Jesus. Length of days is in her right hand, and her left hand riches and honor. Excuse me. <laughs> if, you, if you follow Jesus and you have the beginning of knowledge by fearing him and obeying him, you are wise, and that wisdom will get you length of days, riches, and honor. So if you follow Jesus, put him first, you're going to have riches and you're going to have honor. But if you follow riches first, you're going to have death. And if you follow honor first, you're going to be brought low. But if you follow Jesus first, you'll get riches as a result. You'll get honor as a result. And for me, I want riches and honor to be a result. Because if riches and honor is your main goal in life, what are you living for? Riches has no soul. And if you're living for yourself, if you're working for riches for yourself to be happy, you're going to find no contentment in just making yourself happy. When you try to make yourself happy, you're actually miserable. When you try to make yourself content, you're actually the most frustrated and most tormented. But if you seek to find others contented, if you seek to make other people happy, you are going to be happy and you are going to be content. So in other words, if you try to make yourself happy, you're not. But if you forget about making yourself happy, you just follow Jesus, obey his commandments to love him by loving others, you are going to be happy as a result. And you'll get riches and honor as a result. But if you follow riches and you follow honor, someday you'll lose it all anyways. And you'll be brought low. Someday. But if you are humble and you seek Jesus first, he'll exalt you. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled. So, wisdom is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou can desire are not to be compared with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways, the ways of wisdom, are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Pleasantness. Pleasantness sounds like enjoyment to me, and happiness, and joy and pleasant <laughs> pleasant pleasant ways everybody wants pleasant ways not miserable ways if you forsake wisdom you will have miserable ways if you seek it you will have pleasant ways how do you seek wisdom fear the lord follow him obey his commandments all her paths are peace everybody wants peace everybody wants to feel peace from the inside not by being in a peaceful place or a peaceful situation but I want a type of peace, and I have it, where I can be in a terrible situation and be peaceful rather than having my peace depending on my circumstances. If I'm in a good situation, then I'm peaceful. If I'm in a bad situation, then I'm not peaceful. No, I want to be peaceful in good and bad situations. How do you get that? By following Jesus, by obeying his commands, by seeking wisdom by, and knowledge, by fearing him. By working hard, look to the ant, you sluggard, the Bible says. Look to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Ants work hard, and they're always working, always working. So they have food. And so, anyways, going back, um, everybody wants peace. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Wisdom's paths are peace. If you will seek Jesus first, you will have an inner peace that passes all understanding. Why does it pass all understanding? Because in prison you're happy. Free you're happy. 
As a slave, you're happy. Free, you're happy. Hungry, you're happy. Full, you're happy. Thirsty, you're happy. Quenched with thirst, if that's how you say it. You're happy. So, or satisfied with thirst. Quenched, is that how you say it? Quenched, why are we going? Yeah, I guess so. But anyways, the peace that passes all understanding means that you are peaceful in every situation. You get that peace by following Jesus. So, I'm going to say the wisdom first one more time. Wisdom is more precious than rubies, and all the things you can desire are not to be compared with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. And it also says, she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. Find wisdom. Find. That's something you have to do. Find wisdom. How do you find wisdom? Seek Jesus. Go outside, read your Bible, pray to the Lord, ask him to reveal things to you, pray for other people, fast, take notes on what he tells you. That's how you're going to get wisdom in God's word. So there's foolishness and there's wisdom. Many people choose foolishness because it's the broad way. It's easy but it's miserable and it leads to death and hell. Then there's a narrow way and it's hard at times, but it's peaceful and it's happy and it leads to life. And that's the way of wisdom and the way of following Jesus. So I urge you to choose the way of wisdom, which is following Jesus. And do not choose the easy way of foolishness, foolishness, which leads to destruction and in that way, you believe the devil's lies. You believe fear over faith. Don't do that. Follow Jesus. Follow the way of wisdom, the narrow way that leads to life. And have faith, not fear. So, I just wanted to encourage you with that today. And hope you have a wonderful day. Love you so much.